So in previous tutorials we've seen how when we add an inductor in series we end up moving clockwise along a constant resistance circle on the impedance mid chart. Conversely if we add a capacitor in series we end up moving anticlockwise along a constant resistance circle on the impedance smith chart. When we have elements in parallel we've seen how it is better to use an admittance smith chart and we've seen how when we put a capacitor in shunt then we move in a clockwise direction along a constant conductance circle whereas when we add an inductor in shunt then we move counterclockwise on a constant conductance circle. But what happens when we have both elements in parallel and in series? Well, things get a little bit more complicated and we have to use a, a Smith chart which has got both impedance and admittance coordinates. Remember that the Smith chart is still the same thing. It is nothing but a grid which is superimposed on the polar plot of the reflection coefficient and you can superimpose two types of grids, one which gives you admittance coordinates and one that gives you impedance coordinates. When you have both elements in series and in shunt, you must display both coordinates at the same time to be able to work things out. You can see on, on this chart, which has got both impedance and admittance grids on it, how adding a series capacitor or a shunt capacitor move you along a constant resistance circle and a constant conductance circle respectively and also how adding a series inductor or a shunt inductor move you along a constant resistance circle or a constant conductance circle. Now let's apply this to a real case and uh, we'll uh, use a similar case to the one that we had in our L section matching. So first of all let's go into project options and then let's select our frequency to be 1 GHz, click on single point and then apply. And also in global units we'll choose to have the conductance in millisiemens because we've seen that this is advantageous, the inductance in nanoharries and the capacitance in picofarads. Then let's open a new schematic. So we'll call this schematic L section matching. Now let's assume as we had in our L section matching case that we have a source impedance much greater than our load impedance and that they're both purely resistive. So we press Ctrl L, fetch our resistor and this will be our load resistor, place it on the schematic and add a ground reference. The value of this resistor will choose to be 250 ohms. Now let's place a port on our schematic and the port will have an impedance which represents our source impedance and we'll leave it to 50 ohms. So effectively here we've got a signal generator with uh, an internal impedance of 50 ohms which is purely resistive and that's represented by port 1. And we have a load which is uh, also purely resistive and has got a resistance of 250 ohms. So now if I connect these two and then look at the impedance seen by port 1 I should get a readout of 250 ohms and we also see that there can't be maximum power transfer from the source to the load because the two impedances are far too different from one another. So let's click on graphs, new graph, let's select a Smith chart as the type and let's call it L section. Now what we can do is make this chart more legible by decreasing the number of lines that we've got represented on it and also by uh, changing the font of the numbers. To do this let's right click on the chart, select properties and then we can change the contour density on the grid tab to coarse. Then we can go to fonts, select axis numbers and then select 10 for a font and choose the color to be black. Click on OK and then apply. Now let's add a measurement to our chart. Let's right click on the chart, go on to add a new measurement. We'll select the source to be L section matching and we'll put the S11 measurement on the chart. Click on apply and then OK. Now simulate. You can see that we've got a purely resistive normalized impedance seen by port 1 and this normalized impedance has a value of 5. We can verify this by adding a marker 
press Ctrl M and then click on the point and you can see that you've got a normalized impedance of 5. Because our port has got a, an internal impedance of 50, that impedance will be the normalizing impedance. So the actual impedance seen would be 5 times 50, which is 250. As you know, we can actually look at this directly if we want to by right-clicking on uh, the chart, selecting Properties, and then on the Markers tab, choose to denormalize to 50 ohms. Apply and OK. This allows you to verify that you've set up your schematic correctly because what you should be seeing at the moment is just your load impedance, which is 250 ohms. Now let's right click on the chart again and come back to having normalized values, which is advantageous for impedance matching as we've seen before. Now if we go back to our schematic, you can see that here we've got an impedance of 50 ohms and here an impedance of 250. But what we want to see from uh, this point here is actually 50 ohms. So we need to insert a network right here in the middle between the 50 ohm and 250 ohm impedances so as to make them match. And we've seen how this can be achieved with an L-section matching technique. Now let's carry this out on a Smith chart and we'll see just how much easier things are when we use this tool. So let's go back to our graph and uh, let's get rid of the marker we don't need it at this moment. Now, uh, as you know, with an L section, you've got an element in shunt and an element in series. So you need to be able to do both things. But we've seen in the past that if you do, uh, if you insert an element in shunt, then you use the admittance chart. And if you insert an element in series, then you use the impedance chart. So um, the only thing that we can do is display them both at the same time. So we need to right click and then go on to properties again and on to grid and we need to tick the admittance grid to be displayed then click on apply and OK. Now you can see that things have become incredibly messy and uh, it's very difficult to read anything of the chart. So I'm going to do two things. First of all I'm going to change the colors of the grids so you can distinguish which one is which. So let's right click on the chart again go on to properties and then we can go on to the format tab. On the format tab you can choose the line style for, impeden for impedance and admittance. We'll keep them to solid lines. But the other thing that you can do is choose the colors of the, of the lines that define uh, the various points on the chart. So for the impedance we're going to select green as a color and for the admittance we're going to select red. Now let's click on apply and then OK. Now you can see that we can now distinguish between the uh, admittance chart which is in red and the impedance chart which is in green. However there is still a lot of a mess with the numbers down here and uh, personally I think that this is a major source of confusion. Although it shouldn't be because of course for the uh, admittance chart all the numbers in the bottom half will be positive and the ones in the top half negative whereas for the impedance chart you have the opposite. All the numbers at the bottom will be negative and all the numbers at the top will be positive. However, I actually do believe that to avoid confusion it's much better to take away the values completely from the chart. So we right click on the chart, select properties and then on the grid we deselect the values tick and then click on apply and OK. Now this looks a lot nicer, you don't see any of the values, but there is another way to see what the value of the impedance or admittance uh, is at any point, which we'll see in a moment. So our starting impedance here is the load impedance, which is 250 ohms, and we want to move to an impedance which is 50 ohms. This impedance is matched and hence will have a reflection coefficient of zero, and hence it will be right in the center of the chart, which is shown by the point here. So we've got to go from point uh, A to point B, but in this case we'll have to use both uh, shunt and serious elements. So now let's see what can be done. I'm at this point here, so what I can do is go down this circle of constant conductance up to this point here, where it intersects a circle of constant resistance then what I can do is go up the circle of constant resistance up to the center of the chart. 
So the first leg of the journey entails moving in a clockwise direction along a circle of constant conductance. And we know that this means adding a shunt capacitor. So we know what element we're going to put in there first. We'll put a capacitor in shunt with our resistor. But what value does this capacitor have? Well, as we did before for the uh, admittance matching, you need to look at the uh, susceptance of your target point, you need to look at the susceptance of your starting point, and then you subtract the two, and you can work out what is the normalized susceptance of the capacitor that you're adding. Now you may say, well, you have no numbers, so how are you going to do this? Well, if I hover over the chart with the mouse, you can see that in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, there is a readout for the normalized resistance and the normalized reactance of any point that the mouse cursor is going over. In fact, if I go to the center of the chart here, we should have a normalized resistance of 1 and a normalized reactance of 0, which is what we get. But I hear you say, yes, that's all well and good, but at this very moment I'm looking at the admittance chart and hence I need to see the susceptance and the conductance, not the uh, reactance and the resistance. Well, what's displayed down at the bottom right is governed by what you've said to have as a marker readout. So if you want to change it, all you need to do is right-click on the chart, go on to Properties, and then to the Markers tab, and select the readout to be Admittance. Click on Apply and OK. Now as I hover over with the mouse, you can see that now I've got the normalized conductance and the normalized susceptance displayed at the bottom right. So if I get my cursor to the point where the two um, circles intersect, you can see that I get a conductance of about 0.2 and a susceptance of 0.4. Now the susceptance on my starting point was 0, the susceptance on my end point is 0.4, so 0.4 minus 0 gives me a susceptance of 0.4. So that means that the capacitor that I'm putting in shunt has to have a normalized susceptance of 0.4. So now, by putting this capacitor in shunt with my resistor, I have moved to this point. Now I have to uh, go through the second leg of my journey, which entails moving clockwise along the constant resistance circle up to the center of the chart. And we've seen that moving clockwise on a constant resistance circle means adding a series inductor. Now what is the value of this inductor? Yet again we have to look at the reactance at the point where we want to get to and also the reactance of the point where we're starting from. Of course, at the moment, the readout that we've got at the bottom right of the screen is in terms of admittance coordinates. So what we can do is right-click on the chart, go on to Properties, and then change the display type to Impedance, click on Apply, and then OK. So now the readout should be the normalized impedance. So if I get on there, you can see that I've got a uh, normalized reactance of minus 2, and then you know that in your, at your target point, you have a normalized reactance of zero. The reactance on my final point is zero. The reactance at the point where I'm starting is minus two. So a zero minus minus two will give me two, which is uh, the normalized reactance that the inductor that I'm adding in series has to have in order for us to move up to the center of the chart and hence achieve the match. Now what remains to be done now is uh, denormalizing the uh, susceptance of the capacitor and the reactance of the inductor and working out their actual values as we did before. Now if we go back to our schematic and then insert a capacitor in shunt with the resistor here and an inductor in series and then assign to the capacitor and the inductor the values that we've calculated and then simulate, we should now see 
that we are more or less in the center of the chart and this means that the impedance seen by port 1 is around uh, 50 ohms and this is just what we wanted to achieve.